Good evening, everyone. My name is Blake Stock. I am on the seafood team at Fairtrade USA. Um, this is my first time at this event, and it has been completely inspiring from the presentations that I've seen and the presenters to the conversations that I've had with each of you. This is such an amazing gathering of dedicated people that recognize consumers have the ability to play a significant role in helping to improve the livelihoods of people, uh, the millions of farmers, the fishermen and the workers, the, the people around the world that we rely upon every single day to provide a wonderful array of products that enrich our lives. And over the past few days, um, I've been able to meet with many of our business partners and our producers and some of the leading advocates for the fair trade movement here in the United States. And they've displayed their passion for that movement and its ability to create sustainable livelihoods better working conditions, and community empowerment. And last night, I was speaking with a young woman who expressed surprise that Fairtrade even had a seafood team and certified seafood product. And just out of curiosity, I'd like to see a show of hands of others in this room that are also surprised that we have a seafood team and didn't know about that until um, recently. Okay, well. That's a clear indication that we have some work to do. Um, and you've got some work to do as well, right? Because we are going to rely upon this group um, to help get that message out there, because it's important. A little over five years ago, we recognized that there was a significant number of people that weren't able to reap the benefits of the fair trade movement. With over two thirds of the planet that's covered by oceans and 58 million people that are worldwide and supported by marine fisheries in some way, creating a standard that was specific to the seafood industry became clearly necessary. So we set out to build a standard that protects fishermen from exploitation, maintains traceability to combat illegal, unreported, unregulated fishing, ensures safe working conditions, and creates on the water impact. And so we're proud to say that five years later, after the world's first certified seafood product, an Indonesian yellowfin tuna, we've come um, to certify a host of other supply chains, from salmon to skipjack to shrimp. And this effort has generated over a million dollars in premium for those fishing communities that have gone back in and gone into projects like creating more environmentally sustainable fishery management practices, um, renovations to community spaces, and improved healthcare facilities. We're excited by the growth of this program and the demand for fair trade certified seafood, which is why we're expanding the program uh, to cover seafood that's produced by sustainable aquaculture. And a quick definition of aquaculture is it's the cultivation of aquatic plants and animals. Half of the seafood that we consume today comes from aquaculture. And with a projected growth of population, incomes rising, and the increased demand for protein by 2030, that's going to be two-thirds of all the seafood that's consumed on this planet will come from aquaculture. Aquaculture will be and must be a part of the solution for feeding an increasingly hungry planet with limited natural resources. And we want to help ensure that it's done in an environmentally sustainable and socially responsible way. We feel the world's 19 million aquaculture producers and their families deserve the same opportunities to benefit from fair trade as our next guest, Kevin Scribner, who is an Alaskan fisherman and a longtime advocate of fair trade. So please join me in welcoming him to describe the realities on the ground in the Alaskan salmon fisheries and why fair trade can help. All right. Great. Thanks, Blake, and thanks, uh, y'all, for inviting me here. It's been great. Uh, how many of you have been to Alaska or have lived in Alaska? It looks like we've got a little, uh, not many. It's a great place to go. By the way, Carla, um, uh, Carly is an Alaska fisherman. Um, she's part of our team here. Also, um, is Sergio Castro here? Sergio? 
Um, Sergio is with Del Pacifico. Um, um, they're with a shrimp, a certified shrimp um, uh, program. He was here yesterday. He'll be on our film. And also, lastly, in terms of a call out, Michelle from Long Beach, I want to call out Michelle right there because her husband was in the Coast Guard in Alaska for years and they kept our back, so we needed them. So luckily in Alaska, we have uh, abundant fisheries. And it, in the Alaska State Constitution, it is written in that all fisheries must be sustainably managed. So it's wired right into the civic DNA of Alaska. And Bristol Bay, where I fished and where the operation, the first uh, fair trade salmon operation is, uh, last year was an evident of the abundance. We had the historical record run. 64 million fish came in. It was just, for all time in history, that's the largest run that has ever come in. And in great part because it's an intact wild ecosystem. It's so remote, it's on the far east, uh, west end of Alaska, off the Bering Sea, and there are no other re extractive res uh, resource actions there, so it's, it's a salmon ecosystem. It's actually a salmon temple, as I like to say. There are challenges of work, I like to say, when with weather, but there are also marketplace challenges, and this is where fair trade can come in. So fair trade, um, there, in, there are always incentives to be a, become, you know, to do things responsibly, and that, that's also with fishing, for responsible fishing. Fair trade can help us in the marketplace by give, g helping us gain market access. So getting our, our products, our fair trade uh, salmon into, into markets, but then also in addition to that, getting further more access once you get access and more market share when you're in those markets. And then fair trade gives us a, a premium, a price premium, which is huge. Um, and then lastly, um, one of the other value adds in the market is certainty. So to know that year after year, you have a market for your fish. To, when you, that, so when you go out and you go fishing, you know that your fish have a market. So that's really huge. There are also quality incentives that uh, fair trade can bring to uh, our fishing. Um, you heard earlier, last, or last night and today, about the value of knowing your producer. Um, we, we say, know your fishermen. So that sets up that, you know, that knowledge relationship. But also, I'm learning from here today and yesterday that also we fishermen should know our consumers. And that's you guys. And so there are means today through with uh, all kinds of technology and whatever that we can actually know each other and, and uh, connect. And so I think that's what we should do is, is about what I call relationship marketing. So a little story about the price. So I started fishing in 1980, and the price on the grounds, what a fisherman got, was 58 cents a pound. You can go into the internet and do it in an inflation calculator to find out what 58 cents would be in 2019. It would be $1.77. Last year, the guys on the ground got $1.45 at best for, with all the incentives on. So the fishermen are not keeping up with inflation. Whereas with all the other prices, diesel, everything, everything has gone up with inflation. So fishermen were actually losing ground or losing water that way. So this is also where fair trade can help us keep up, at least keep up with inflation, if not reward us for the incentives uh, and quality. And this is where also the quality side of it, when you're in a relationship, when you know who your consumer is, your customer is, you're going to take care of that fish better. So there's a whole system that's really working well. The community development funds, Paul talked a lot about that this morning. So in Bristol Bay, with the operation there, we have three community groups. One is in a village called Manakotik, and that's predominantly native. There are 64 fisher, uh, fisher men, fisher women there, 11 of them are, 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 are the women. In Dillingham, 55 men, nine women. Ekuk, 43 men, 19 women. So fair trade provides a, a, a mechanism, again, for incentives and um, a great way to get value back to the community. So exemplary by that. Um, and livelihood certainty. 
native people have persisted on subsistence fish for over 4,000 years in the, in, the, in the bay. We want that to happen for another 4,000 years. So now, with the film, we're going to introduce the film. So we're excited you guys all get to be a part of the world premiere of a video which highlights the benefits fishermen around the world have received because of fair trade certification. You're going to see three different fisheries in different stages of the fair trade program. The first one is going to be in the beginning, and that's the Alaskan fishery. Another will be a couple years down that road uh, in Mexico, and then the original fishery that we certified in Indonesia. You're going to hear directly from these fishermen and communities um, and how fair trade has benefited them. I hope you come away from this video recognizing, like I did, that fair trade is not just about generating premium. One of the real strengths of the movement is the community empowerment that the premium creates. You'll see fishermen in this film that have agency where there was none previously, that have more visibility into what can often be very opaque supply chains. And that visibility is power. Having organized into groups or cooperatives or collectives, they're able to negotiate a better price for their product than they would have individually. And ultimately, I hope that you see um, consumers can connect to these fishermen through fair trade and create sustainable livelihoods. And I'll leave you something, with something that I learned a few years ago that's always resonated with me. Um, you might need a doctor a couple times in a year, and if you're lucky, you need a lawyer a couple times in a lifetime. But you need a fisherman and a farmer three times every single day, OK? We're pleased to introduce this film. We hope that you enjoy it. And please seek out fair trade certified seafood product every time you eat seafood. Thank you. Entonces, la vida del pescador es bonita. Es muy bonita, pero es muy pesado. Porque el pescador Eh, vamos con la ilusión de agarrar. It's really a profession they have. It's not a profession that anyone can do. No todos trabajamos igual, algunos más, algunos menos, pero, pero ahí la gente, le, todos los compañeros le hacen la lucha a no, agarrar camaroncito. Y pues ahí, se, si, si no le terquea uno aquí, le dice terquearle a, a, a aferrarse a, a trabajar a, para agarrar un poquito más. Esa es la, la, porque hay veces que en la mañana no agarras camarón. They are very resilient to the conditions that they face when they're either at open sea or under the sun with salty water. Es algo que es muy admirable. Yo los admiro y los respeto porque el ser pescador tiene que tener mucha perseverancia. La gente de la cooperativa El Tata no tiene otro patrimonio entender que si la temporada es mala nos tenemos que aguantar. And we often forget that fisheries by definition is a system that is composed by the biological part and the social part. And if you tear them apart, you don't have a fishery. The fair trade model is looking at an entrepreneurship model that looks at strengthening group organization and their management skills so they're able to predict how much they're going to be catching, how much they can deliver, how much they should be looking after. We're riding the crest between two global movements. One, the fair trade movement, which has been around for longer than 20 years, but also the sustainable seafood movement. It's a supply chain, you know, it's not one guy. Obviously the fishermen, they do their job. Our company, you know, as a certificate holder and processor and import into the U.S., you know, we try to integrate as much as possible. 
So it's a real teamwork from the fisherman all the way to the restaurant, to the retailer, and of course, you know, then the consumer with their election. Fishing's a major part of our life. The Bristol Bay industry is short, intense, but uh, produces uh, you know, more sockeye salmon than any place else in the world. It's a gamble every year. You spend a lot of money getting set up. You don't know what your season's gonna look like. You don't know what the price is gonna look like. And it's a hard gamble for a younger fisherman. It's totally different than living in a city because there's nothing here. You have to be totally prepared when you come out here. And I think that's challenging. Typically we're out in the bay. When it's hot and heavy, we'll call for backup and we'll have both crews out there, which makes a 12 hour day, a 18 hour day for some guys. Which is a lot more work. Conditions out there can kind of get a little crazy. That's a big struggle on this beach because we come here every year knowing that we're not gonna get paid very much for all the fish we get, all the hard work we put in. It's become almost a desperation that they have to catch a lot of fish and have to make a lot of money just to pay off the debt that they have. Fisheries in the U.S. have many of the same issues as fisheries around the world. There's management issues that could lead to the collapse of the fishery. There's communities that rely on fish, and if the fishery collapses, the community collapses. You know, being a fisherman I'm, myself, I kind of know the, the thought process. Most fishermen have not seen transparency or even pricing, so we needed a model that connected the producer, in this case the fisher, all the way to the marketplace. Well, it does provide a measure of some local control. Folks would have a hands-on say in how their resources are, are used in, in ways that could help communities. The transparency that Fairtrade offers and, and that our company shows the fishermen, shows them the steps and the pricing model. If somebody thinks some price or some step is too high or too low, then they can challenge it and work it out. Knowing a price at the beginning of the season is important to everyone. I feel that Fair Trade does that. You know what you're getting paid when you put your net out and you as a consumer who are eating it will get some satisfaction in knowing that you're actually helping us as fishermen out a little bit more than you would have otherwise. Indonesia is a very good starting point to expand into other countries. Lessons learned can be transferred to other areas throughout the world. Fishers take their future, their own future in their own hands without jeopardizing the environment. Secara langsung kami bisa memberikan kontribusi ke lingkungan di mana kami berada itu. With that premium, the fishermen can decide what to do with that money for the good of their community or for the good of their product. Oh, kalau di desa saya sekarang, saya melihat sangat perkembangan sekali. Kalau Petri bisa bantu, membantu, bisa. Kita mau saja. Ya tahu siapa yang enggak mau. Ada yang membantu. 
previously premium fund was the one that drive them, right? But now the connection between them, the discussions, the interest is more than premium fund. In Indonesia society, actually, fishermen is quite in the bottom of the society. But now they are contributing money to the village. They becoming proud of being a fisherman. Saya sangat mengharapkan sekali dalam hal ini, ya pemerintah pusat maupun pemerintah yang terkait, bagaimana bisa berkerjasama, bisa mendengar suara-suara kami dari nelayan sesuai dengan harapan-harapan kami agar nelayan ke depan tetap masih ada dan nelayan tetap masih berkelanjutan. And it's been a great success story in my opinion. And I see that really evolving further and being a showcase to demonstrate what can be done. If you empower people on the ground, you give them all the tools they need to be self-sustainable, and that's what we're looking at. That's the challenge, you know. It's getting more people involved. With a little bit of attention and connection to the consumer would really develop a sustainable livelihood for fishers. Fairtrade is proud to partner with the small-scale fisheries around the world that are, that are really working hard to bring food to our tables.